we're here all day today, we're here all day tomorrow, and uh, we're just chilling. So if you wanna come see any of the products, if you wanna ask us any questions, that's what we're here to do. Now, we just dropped some hot, hot fire on the social media, the social media channels. We're starting over. We're restarting. See, I knew it. That's why I was stalling. I knew it. I knew something was going to happen. Are we restarting right now? Should I just stand here and jig? Yeah, we're good. Hello, everybody. My name is Valentina V, and we are at Cinegear. As you can see, this is gear, and it's made for cinema, Cinegear at the Los Angeles Convention Center here in downtown LA. We didn't know if we would make it, let's be honest. We didn't know if we would be here in person, but we are safe, masked up, ready to kill it. If you can see me and hear me, then go ahead in the comments, just write the word red. And if Ian sees a bunch of the word red, he'll, he'll, he'll do like a little okay sign. And then that's why we'll know that you can see me and hear me. The Wi-Fi um, is always pristine at convention shows. So I know that it's going to uh, just come through real, real clear, 4K quality, am I right? You're here at the Aperture booth. As you can see, we have all of your favorite Aperture products around and some new stuff that we'll get to. What is this, baby? If you didn't see the announcement for this, I will cover it. But first, things first, we dropped some hot, fire on social media today the new dun 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 1200d light uh this is the big beefy boy unlike the big mama which is what i called the 600d it almost seems like we're doubling our power output every couple years uh it's because we are we started with the tried and true 120d back in i think somewhere around 2016 then we had the 300D, 300X. Then we had our lovely boys over here, the 600D and 600X. And now we have doubled our output again. Now, as with all aperture lights, you know that the number means how many watts of output does it have, right? So 1200 watts of output. And then the letter is what color temperature it is. So D for daylight. This is the 1200D. If you are familiar, with LED lights, then you will know that this is a COB light, meaning chip on board. It has one diode, it's just a really big one. So unlike a panel light that has a bunch of diodes all over in little neat rows, this one is one big one. What does that mean? That means that this light can be your softest light and it can be your hardest light because of one system. It's called the Bowens mount system. That is the way that you attach things to this light. So say you want to attach a reflector, like over here, we have one of the reflectors it comes with, or you could attach, let's say, a big light dome, a big diffuser on top of it, or you could attach over here on the 600Xs, the uh, Fresnel, the F10 Fresnel with the barn doors. It all works because it's all part of the same locking system. It's all part of the same accessories system. If you're familiar with aperture lights, you're probably wondering, what are the big changes? Like we understand that the 1200D Pro is twice as powerful as the 600, but what are the big changes? Can I still use my modifiers on it that I still have from my other lights? What's going on? So let me break it down for you a little bit. So the big changes here, as you know, uh, a lot of our lights can be powered using V-mount batteries. This one here has two ways of powering it. There is your standard AC power that all of the lights always have. So this is your house power and it has two DC in 48 volts. What does that mean? Well, that means that you can have something like a block battery two block batteries in here to power it. Now, to, in order to power it at 100%, so that full 1200D flavor, you need both of them. If you only have one, that's going to give you the output equivalent to a 600D. We're getting into big boy territory, big boy, beefy boy territory. So that is why we have switched to like the block battery method instead of the method where you put uh, the batteries directly onto here. 
the other big change uh, that a lot of people don't realize is since we're going into this more cinema vibe, since we are going away from consumer lights, um, not as a company, we still have a lot of consumer lights, but for this particular model, a lot of people want DMX, right? That's something that's incredibly useful, especially if you're trying to rig these lights up on a truss, if you're trying to put them on a stage, on a grid of some sort. Well, this has built in wireless DMX. What does that mean? Well, if you have something like a DMX board or the Luminaire app on an iPad with a transmitter on it, you don't need a separate receiver. The receiver is built into this box. Something else that a lot of people really want in their high-powered lights is the ability for it to be weatherproof because you're carrying it around everywhere. Uh, you are putting it through a lot of tough conditions. I know some people shoot in deserts. Some people shoot in rainstorms. There's a lot of you know, things that you put your lights through and these are really heavy duty. They're built to last. So both the 1200D and the 600D over here, they are gonna give you that weatherproofing. They're gonna be uh, good through like a light rain shower. I'd say if it's a heavy rain, it's about 30 minutes and then you should probably get out of there if there's a thunderstorm situation. But under a light rain, keep shooting, keep shooting. Um, now, you're probably curious, hey, V, I have a 300D, I have one of these, or a 300X, and I have a Fresnel 2X, right? A Fresnel is um, one of these, the 2X is a little smaller, but a Fresnel essentially makes the light more powerful, concentrates that light, and you're able to spot or flood the light. The more spotted it is, the more concentrated it is, the more output you have, right? The thing is, with the bigger output sizes, the diodes are getting bigger, which means that the optics for Fresnels are getting bigger as well. So with the 300D, you have the Fresnel 2X. With the 600D, we have the F10 Fresnel and then the optional barn doors if you want them. If you just want the barn doors, you can just buy the barn doors and put them on the reflector that comes with it, no problem. But for this one, it's actually a little bit of a different system. So for this one, you have the reflectors that come in three different strengths or three different sizes. So you have the 15 degree, you have the 30 degree, and then you have the 55 degree. So the larger that reflector, then the smaller the degree. So this is right here, I believe, the uh, 30 degree. And then if you see over here, Casey, this big boy over there that looks like, um, you see that movie Coneheads back in the 80s, 90s, that, that one that looks like a conehead, that is the 15 degree reflector. And what's cool about all three of these reflectors is that they come in their own little case, kind of matryoshka dolled, like together, one inside the other, so they're very compact, but that's how you would achieve that spotting and flooding. Now, as far as Okay, now I have this really big, powerful source. Uh, how do I, now I know how to make it hard, right? How to achieve that hard light with it. How do I achieve soft light? Well, of course, you can put on one of these light domes. So there are essentially three different sizes of light domes. There were two, and we've just introduced a third. So the first, the standard light dome size is going to be this light dome too. This is a 90 centimeter diameter size. And what's great about the light dome too is that number one, it pops up instantly, right? So it takes about 30 seconds to set up. I've got it down to a science. I'm at around 15 seconds with that thing. Uh, and it comes with two diffusion cloths. So it comes with a diffusion cloth that cuts down the light about 1.5 stops and another one that cuts it down 2.5 stops. It also, very clutch comes with a magnetic gel holder on the inside. So say you buy uh, that 300D instead of the 300X, but you still want it to be a nice soft tungsten light. Well, you pop a CTO gel, color temperature orange gel into that gel holder. Doesn't even have to be big, like just about, you know, like a foot size square and um, you get a tungsten light. Now with the Light Dome 2, 
the Lido Mini 2, I should say, that's more of a beauty dish style diffusion, right? So it's smaller, but it's mostly for lighting faces, for lighting smaller areas, and it also comes with a gel holder. It has a diffusion fabric that cuts down about half a stop of light. Now we move on to this big boy. So this is the newest release. This is the Light Dome 150. 150 because it's, well, let's see. If that was 90 centimeters, this is 150 centimeters, which if you're in the US, that's about five feet, which is uh, kind of my height, a little, bit, a little bit more than my height. But what's great about this is number one, it is a full circle. So if you're used to photography, if you're used to things that, you know, like strip boxes for strobes, those are great, but a lot of times what you really do is you see them in the reflection of your eyes. And that reflection is a square or a rectangle. It doesn't look very organic or natural. This one, by the way that it's sewn together, you see these little divots here? This creates a perfectly round circle. So whatever that reflection is going to be, it's going to be just nice and organic. It's going to look like a little teardrop in the eye. The other thing that it comes with is this 45 degree grid. So if you want your light to be soft, but you also want it to be directional, you put this grid on it. And what's great is that it comes with it. A lot of companies will sell this separately, but this actually comes all together in the kit. It also comes with the same two diffusion fabrics that the Light Dome 2 comes with, right? So the one that's like 1.5 stops of diffusion and 2.5 stops of diffusion or stops of light less. Anytime you diffuse a light, you lose light, right? So it's all about how do I keep the intensity of the light while also making it soft, which is why there are options for you. This right here is now on the 600X Pro. So just COB lights, what do we got? We got the 120D, we got the 300D, 300X, the 600D and 600X Pro, and now we have the 1200D Pro. This is the new one. What else can I say about it? Um, I talked about the wireless DMX built in. I talked about uh, that this one doesn't have V-mount batteries. Something cool that maybe if you are in the Aperture ecosystem that you may not realize is this curved ballast, right? So the curve is specifically for, okay, like, yeah, you can, you can have the light pointing up, you can have the light pointing side, but what if you want the light pointing down? Let me actually turn this down because it's at 100% right now, which means it will definitely blind someone. Well, if you want the light pointing down, that's what the curve is for, right? So there you go. And then of course, if the reflector is off, I can turn it like a full 360 degrees, which is awesome. Now, the other thing about powerful lights is that, you know, back in the day, like when we just had the 120D, it would, the original 120D, it would go down to only 10% power. And you would think, Oh, that's, uh, that's plenty, right? I don't need it to go down any lower than 10%. But when you have a light that's this powerful, even 10% is a whole lot of power. So this light can actually go down to 0.1%. So a fraction of a fraction. Uh, check this out. So you can have a light that's at 0.1%. There's also this new screen here. This is um, an LCD screen as opposed to an OLED screen, which means you have a lot more options and it's just a lot clearer to see. Of course, it comes with all the standard things that you expect an aperture light to come with, like all of the built-in effects. So you can do like paparazzi mode, you can do faulty bulb mode, you can do fireworks mode. It comes with different levels of dimming curve so say that you want your dimming, maybe it's an effect that you're doing in camera and you want your dimming to go logarithmically or as an S-curve or linearly, you can choose that. I mean, that's for real nerds like me. The other great thing is that say that you, you're not a DMX operator, you don't have a DMX board, you don't even know what DMX is. Well, you can always control this light from farther away remotely by just using your phone. Of course, the Citus Link app. The Citus Link app is uh, available for iOS, it's available for Android, and you can download it to your phone, to your iPad, and you can control lights from it. You can see over here, we have a Citus Link app. Hold on, let me, I'm kind of like, okay. 
I got tangled in the cord. We knew this would happen. We have a little example of Citus Link over here. So here we have Citus Link working on an iPad with these uh, MC lights and the B7C lights. And you can see it can uh, basically control all of them. So if I go to the group that says the MC12 light kit and I go to the colors, I can instantly change what colors they are as long as they're in the same group. I can create different effects. I can go over here to the different effects. Party lights, I can stop that. I can go to paparazzi, start the paparazzi sequence. Fireworks, I can do a color for fireworks. There's so many different types of settings that I could have or I could control them separately. So if I go to like one of the MCs, for example, and make it red, love it. I think I might have turned it off, but anyway. Um, that is the Size Link app. It's really cool. You can also control the B7Cs. While we're over here, let's talk about the RGB fixtures because this is probably gonna be your most affordable RGB light, RGBWW, meaning that you see that it has these 12 uh, diodes in there. They're actually clusters of diodes. So there's like five tiny little diodes inside each cluster red, green, blue, so it's RGB, and then WW, so it can have daylight and tungsten. Why should we want that? Why the WW? Well, because that way, the three RGB diodes aren't like fighting for control of like, how do we make this look like pure white? You actually have pure white, so you can actually use this as a daylight light. All of these are right now charging in this big old case. Uh, this comes in obviously single lights. It also comes in this 12 pack and it comes in a four pack. You can also, um, these are magnetic so you can charge your phone if you put your phone on it. And it has some USBs over here as well. In fact, this iPad is charging via this USB. The other uh, small RGB lights that we have, this is probably my favorite, is these B7Cs, which can charge, sure they can charge in the case, but they can also just charge in a regular household socket. That's incredible, okay, I'm just gonna say it. That's, did I break this mask? I might have broken this mask by just saying that it's incredible, but that's okay. Um, this is incredible because this means that you don't need to hook it up to like a little USB. You can just stick it in your fixture and then have it charge the whole time. Oh yeah, I have another mask in my backpack. It's like a gray backpack. If you can grab it, thank you. So um, these are also RGBWW, so you can have the purest white light or the purest tungsten light available. And what is really the selling point for these is that, like I said, I'm taking it out. It's not attached to anything, right? So it can run for about 80 minutes on a full charge, which is incredible when you think, oh, thank you so much. This is why, folks, you bring a backup mask. Sometimes you are too excited and um, it gets too much, the excitement. There we go. How's that, Casey? Thanks, Casey. Always looking out for me. So these guys, um, as I was saying, it's really, really helpful that you don't actually need any kind of cable to run them because if you are shooting, let's, let's say you're shooting like a wide shot and you have like little table lamps everywhere. You don't want cables running through the floor, making everything look messy. You can just stick these inside of fixtures. The fixtures don't even need to be on. They don't need to have cables and they work uh, at full power for over an hour. So that's incredible at like, and of course at lower powers, they work for more time. But these are our little guys. Are you ready? Are you ready to see the big boys? Let's go see the big boys. Of course, Everyone in the world, I feel like everyone knows RGB lights at this point, right? But I'm pretty sure that not everyone has this kind of innovation in our new Nova P600C. So if you're familiar with aperture lights, you might be familiar with the original Nova 300C. This was like revolutionary when we dropped it because Number one, the ballast, the power box, is inside the light. So literally, it's just a cable,
goes into the wall and you're good, right? You have this, this is your control box. It goes on here. This is hard to do with a mic, but you know what? We're gonna get it. Push the pin in. Literally everything I do on live is just, hold on. Casey, amazing, thank you. I struggle. I love live streams. You can put it in. Thank you. So uh, you can just put it on here and control it, or it actually comes with a longer cable. You see how short this cable is? It comes with a longer cable. So say you have it mounted somewhere up there, like we have here, right? We have lights mounted up there, but then we have the control boxes down here at, you know, at a touchable height so that we can control them. Uh, so it comes with two cables, but the new one, the improvement, is a lot, right? It has this control box and it's still, excuse me, sorry. It's still here, but it doesn't have the short cable because actually it has pins on the back side of it. Let me show you. See these pins? These are contact pins and has contact pins here. So you don't actually need to have that separate cable running. It's, it just attaches here. Of course, it also comes with that longer cable so that, see that work. Of course, it also comes with the longer cable so that you can have it if you mount it somewhere up there. But you don't need either of that because guess what? These are also on Citus Link. So if you have Citus Link on your phone or an iPad, uh, you can control them from far away as well. Now, the other really cool innovation with this one is it also has wireless DMX. So if you are someone who owns a big studio who wants to outfit um, a stage with these lights, then, and you have a DMX board or you have wireless uh, DMX transmitter, then this has those channels for you to be able to control it. Not only can you control the color temperature and color of this whole light, well, it's a little bright right now. Not only can you do that, but you can also control it. Do, 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 do. You can also control, there's four sections, there's four segments in this light and you can control each of them individually. I wonder if I can turn them on right now. They're not currently on, but if I go to effects, let's see. One color chase, let's see what that looks like. There we go, it's bright. Hold on, let me turn it down. I know, Casey, I know it's too bright. I can already read your mind. Here we go. So I just have a color chase going on here. But basically you can control these four regions of the light, either from the control panel or from wireless DMX and set them to whatever color you want. You can do chase sequences, you can do all sorts of things. You can change the hue of it. Like right now I can maybe change the hue. Let's see here, do 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 of what that is. I can change the speed of it, I can make it faster, I can make it slower. There's not only chases, you can just have it be different colors. I think it's really useful for, say you're trying to imitate sunlight, right? Or you're trying to imitate some sort of natural light. And a lot of times that natural light, uh, say you're indoors, it's bouncing off of everywhere. So it's not just coming straight from the sun. There's like something coming off of a tree maybe, or the floor. Um, so you can make it a different type of dappled, you know, range of daylight and tungsten and just make it a lot more natural. Now, I'm gonna turn off the chase because I feel like that's kind of distracting. And then I'm gonna go back to um, what we were talking about earlier in terms of what are the differences with this light, uh, with the original, uh, let's do exit, light mode, there we go, color fade, let's do that one and let's do speed very slow and intensity down. So I'm just like doing it on the fly. So um, big difference, big differences here, obviously it's bigger, right? So it's two by one feet. So that's one big difference. Second big difference is we actually are making uh, hard grids for it. Hard honeycomb grids that you can slide in on the top uh, in different sizes, so in different, um, whatchamacallits, uh, in different, what did I, what, oh, here, 
in different spreads. I was going to say in different degrees. That was the word I was looking for. So this is a 45 degree grid. We also have a 15 degree grid um, and a 60 degree grid, I believe. So essentially what you do here is you slide it in. Let me just make sure I got the top right. Yeah. This is a feature that a lot of people have been asking for. This grid is a little defected because it is like the, the factory one that's like the test model, so don't worry, yours won't look like this. But essentially what happens is if you kind of come up to the light and go from head on to the side, you'll see it start sort of fading away, which means that this soft light source can also be directional, right? You're not getting it from the side at all, but you're getting it from the front. So this is good for isolating a single person, making sure that light doesn't fall on the background, or making sure that light only goes in one spot of the background and not somewhere else. The other big change here is that these lights have always had the front panel diffusion on it, right? Well, the 600D, let me take this off. With the 600D, we've actually made it so that you can take that front panel diffusion off. So it has these four D rings up top, and if you screw them off, or you can use just like a flathead screwdriver, you can actually take this whole front panel off, and a lot of people want that if they want that added punch, or if they want that added power. Of course, this works on a Citus Link, just like all of the other lights, and uh, this has a, because it's, it's pretty heavy, so it, it's on a junior pin as far as mounting it. Now, um, I just want to go over, I think, if you have any questions, by the way, leave them in the chat. And then after this, uh, Ian will like pick up any questions that you have and ask me. You can ask me things like, what color is your hair? Um, where do you live? Don't ask me where I live. You can ask me, what is your cat's name? What kind of food did you feed her this morning? Just non-aperture related questions only, please. I'm just kidding. So last but not least, um, I also want to talk about, okay, like obviously these lights, these big lights are big deals, right? But I really love these small lights because I'm a travel filmmaker. A lot of times I have to get on a plane and I have to get a small kit that'll fit into my carry-on or like the overhead compartment. And I have to build an interview setup. And something like this is actually perfect for me because these 600D and 600X lights, they come with built-in Fresnels. So you can see back here, sorry about that. You can spot and flood them. They're very powerful. They can work off, um, obviously, your, your house power, AC power, but they can also work off of Sony and PF batteries. Oh, no, they can work off of V-mount batteries, or you can detap them, which is incredible. Um, they have these barn doors already in there that you can close up and open. So here, you can look at the table. <laughs> See here? It really like cuts the amount of light that goes in and out. These also come off, so if I want to make it come off, I'll do this. Light it out like that. And it has its own accessories. So it has a mini zoom and a soft box. The mini zoom, just like how you would uh, pretty much, okay, I'll just leave this off. It's very hard to do when you're holding a microphone, I will say. Just like uh, you're probably used to the Aperture Spotlight attachment, this is the Spotlight attachment for the 60D and 60X. So you can see over here on the wall, it casts the light very far, creating that spotlight effect. And it you're able to use these cutters on the side to cut the light. Now you're probably wondering, why is that even useful? Well, a lot of times we only really think about lighting the subject, but we really don't think about lighting the background. Now, do we say we want to have maybe a window shade pattern in the background? Maybe we want to highlight a painting in the background. I've definitely used these to like make it look like a painting was glowing from within. You can use this. You can send that light a lot farther, throw it a lot farther. That's why it's called a spotlight. And it has gobos. Now, these are M-size gobos. There's a couple of different um, 
gobo sizes, like the standard gobos in our standard spotlight mounts that work with the 300 and the 600. Those are uh, B size gobos, these are M size gobos. And you see, so you kind of put them in upside down. So I have the A here and it's upside down, but when I put it in, it's right side up on the wall. And they sort of work counterintuitively like that. Uh, the same thing with these cutters. So if I want to move the top cutter in and out, you can see it actually cuts the bottom of the A off. So there's that one, and then it, there's also the soft box, which is uh, 14 inches by 14 inches. It does come with a 45 degree grid as well. So say I was, you know, taking this on the road with me, I would just have three of them, really. I would use this as my key light on my subject. It's a nice, soft key light. The soft box comes in the pouch. I would use this as maybe some sort of background slash. I would, there's a lot of times that you're shooting as white walls, so having some sort of slash in the background makes everything more interesting. And then I would have this with the barn doors as a little bit of a hair light to pop my subject out from the background, use the barn doors to make sure that it doesn't ping the camera lens. Bada bing, bada boom, I got a perfect interview set up right here. So maybe if you're not in the market for some of these larger lights that we have everywhere, and you don't want something that's like a small panel light, you want something that's directional, this could be a very, very good option for you. I think that's it. Do let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm gonna be doing another live stream later as well. So if you want me to show anything else, I can. But yeah, we're gonna throw it over to Ian for questions. And they started playing music back there. Perfect timing. I mean, impeccable timing. I don't even know. So what's up? Uh, Who, what are do we you got? Planning on using fewer HMIs now that the 1200D is on its way. Am I planning? Like, am I as a person planning? Okay. So the question is, am I planning on using fewer HMIs now that the 1200D is on its way? Whoever asked that question, you should know. I've been using Abiger lights almost exclusively for four years now. So those have been out of my personal um, stock for a while. So yeah, HMIs are gone. You heard it here first, they're dead. Creatively, what, what would you do with the Nova P600C? Creatively, what would I do with the Nova P600C? Just about a million things. Uh, so I definitely have used the Nova in order to create uh, effects for music videos. So that's something that I would do as well. So um, when you have certain effects in lights, like say exam for example, you have your car, car lights, like your, your police lights. A lot of times when you use the police lights preset inside of the Nova, it's either white, uh, it red or blue, right? It flashes. In this case, you can have both of them. Um, another good use of this, if you're using the chase sequence, like I showed earlier, is to have to fake a moving car. So you can just have one sort of light traveling through as a chase sequence, like maybe one tungsten panel going through, and that can double as you know, you having, um, you passing by a bunch of street lights on the street. So there's, there's a lot of applications, but I think the most common one that I would use it for is just not having a panel that's completely daylight because light itself is not always just this pure white light. There's always some sort of reflections happening. So that's what I would use it for. I would literally program something that's like, this is like, um, this is daylight, then this is like 4400, then this has a little bit of green, this has a little bit of blue, and just make it a little bit more natural for me. Two more questions. Two more questions. What type of creator is the 1200D meant for? What type of creator is the 1200D for? The 1200D for, it, the 1200D is for the professional creator. I don't want to put everyone who is shooting YouTube videos out of the mix, because of course you can use it if you're shooting YouTube videos. But if you are on a film set and you need that extra power, say you want to cover a group of people, you want to use that big light dome, that light dome 150, or you even want to use one of these guys up there. This is the new lantern that we have, the Lantern 90. And you need a lot of power in order to cover a lot of people or to cover a large area. That's when you're going to be using the 1200D. If you're used to 
REM 18s, that's when you're gonna use the uh, 1200. If you're used to like Joker 1600s, that's when you're used to, you're gonna be using it. So it's really a big workhorse and um, also for studio applications too. So hell yeah, that's what, Professionals, Ian. How much fun is it being back at events? Oh my God, events. I miss it. You know, here's the thing. I am either at home these days or on set. When I'm at home, I'm stressed and tired because I'm usually editing. And when I'm on set, I'm stressed and tired because I'm usually running the set. So it feels good to be at events because um, I just get to run my mouth for however long we've been doing this. And it's even better because you can't see the bottom half of my face. So I've just been pulling faces this whole time and you haven't seen. What am I doing right now? You don't know. It's a mystery. So this has been, uh, this has been fun. I hope that you learned some new things. I have a feeling that most of you are going to watch this after the actual live stream, which is chill. So if you're watching it after the actual live stream, give me a comment. Just say hashtag after homies after homies yeah hashtag after homies and guess what i'm gonna be one too because i'm gonna watch this back and make fun of myself this is valentina v from cinegear i just want to let you know that we do have a giveaway we are giving away a four pack of mc lights which are these little babies right here so we're giving away four of these with the case so it's the four light kit and all you gotta do is go to the uh, app store, whatever app store you use, whether it's the Apple iStore or the Google Play Store, and review the Citus Link app, which is the app that controls most of these lights. Go ahead and review it and take a picture of your review and submit it. We should be throwing to a graphic soon to show you where to submit it. If you submit a review in the app store, you could win a four pack of MCs. And I think I'm also going to submit a review because uh, I don't have a four pack of MCs and I'd like one. All right, everybody, uh, have a great rest of your day. And again, if you're in LA, come on by, say hi. I'll be the one with blue hair, just standing at the Aperture booth, just living. <laughs> and yeah, if you have any questions, let me know.